It is appropriate to evaluate the disgraced rider, isn't it? Well, he was stripped of his Tour de France victories within the framework of the culture that predominated in the sport. There have been frauds in all the games, talking about the cycling, well, it's no saint. Let's see what is what in details. Want to watch the greatest frauds in cycling? You can watch it out only on Cycling Right Now. Let's talk about it. Should we? But you are all forgetting something that is to press the bell icon and subscribe to our channel. Genuinely, there was an initial reaction of relief when we heard that the anti-doping agency had decided to remove Lance Armstrong from his seven Tour de France victories. Our play about the dark years of the Tour de France around the turn of the millennium, we had become more and more convinced that Lance Armstrong, along with other high-profile professional cyclists of his era, had used illegal drugs to enhance their performances. The whole EPO generation was perplexed by the fact that a youngster from Texas, who was relatively unknown, was able to overcome them all. This result left the EPO generation with a sense of hopelessness. Is it feasible that Armstrong's opponents just didn't put in as much effort in the gym as Armstrong did? Or was it feasible that, in the course of overcoming cancer, Armstrong had received physiological and psychological benefits that gave him an advantage over the other competitors? Don't forget to tell us in the comments! Do you know EPO is a banned hormone that influences the production of red blood cells? The report also criticizes Armstrong for his dishonest behavior. As part of his routine for the U.S. Postal Service Pro Cycling Team, it is alleged that he participated in the distribution of performance-enhancing chemicals and the trafficking of such medications. This was done to enhance his ability to compete. A culture that demanded cyclists to do everything they needed to maximize their performance existed long before Lance Armstrong, and drugs have always been a part of the professional cycling circuit. To a certain extent, it did not matter who did or did not take performance-enhancing drugs, the topic was unimportant. The real issue was that the team medics were purposefully doping the riders and that the team leaders were bullying others and establishing excessive expectations for the squad. As a result of this, the only choice available to young riders who had the ambition but not the experience to genuinely compete at a high level was to use performance-enhancing medicines, and a true cyclist's integrity could only be preserved by abstaining from the competition. Armstrong should not be regarded with high respect for these reasons. On the other hand, perhaps it is time for us to take a step back and look at Armstrong not only as the con artist that he was, but also as cycling's most renowned doping victim. Perhaps in the end he got what he deserved, but there are a lot of other individuals who used the same techniques and broke the same rules as him and got away with shorter sentences because they were detected. This action was carried out by more than just him. Although the decision to dope or not was always a personal one, and many cyclists raced clean or chose not to compete rather than take the drug, we still need to evaluate Armstrong in the context of the culture that predominated in the sport to get a fair picture of his actions. In the end, though, Armstrong was victorious over all of his rivals and won first place in the world's most famous cycling event on seven straight occasions in a row. The use of EPO is not the sole reason that explains how he was able to win by such a big margin. In fact, it was just one of several factors. He stood out as the most likable member of what was otherwise a rather unlikable group. However, those folks should take into mind the comments made by Armstrong's most direct adversary. At the moment, a big number of people refer to him as one of the most renowned cheats in the history of the sporting world. After Armstrong's public confession to Oprah Winfrey, which brought the long-kept truth to the forefront of public attention, Ulrich eventually came clean and stated that he had used EPO throughout his career. This was many months after Armstrong's confession. You can only call it cheating on my part when it is evident that I have acquired an unfair advantage, Ulrich said. Unfortunately, this was not the case. Simply said, all I wanted was for everybody to have an equal opportunity to win. When Lance Armstrong was disqualified from his victory in the Tour de France, the organizers of the event decided not to give any of Armstrong's competitors the winner's titles. This is perhaps the most striking aspect of the situation. Considering that so many of the top riders were taking performance-enhancing chemicals, how far down in the rankings would they have needed to look to locate an honest cyclist, given the prevalence of doping among the top riders? Tell us in the comment box if this is justifying. Lance Armstrong's years on the bike were likely defined by dishonesty and lies, but in the end, the only uninteresting thing about his otherwise great career was that he used drugs. His accomplishments on the bike were otherwise incredible. USADA just issued Armstrong a lifetime suspension and stripped him of his seven Tour de France victories. The organization did not disclose the report detailing the reasons for these actions. 
This is even though US ADA just issued Armstrong a lifetime suspension and stripped him of his victories. 26 witnesses came forward and claimed that Armstrong was largely in control of operating the doping program. 11 of Armstrong's former colleagues were among those who testified against him. According to the testimonies provided by Armstrong's former teammates, Armstrong's dependency on EPO, testosterone, and blood transfusions was a direct outcome of his drive to win the Tour de France on an annual basis. According to the study, he not only expected his teammates to use drugs to support his goals, but he also forced them to do so. It was not enough that his comrades put maximum effort on the bike. He also needed them to conform to the doping regimen specified for them or be replaced. He was born on September 18, 1971 in Dallas, Texas. At the very early age of 12, Lance started showing his skills as an avid cyclist by placing fourth in the Texas State 1500-meter freestyle. Lance soon learned about the triathlon, a race where you swim, ride a bike, and run. He began to compete in triathlons, and by the time he was 16, he was the best triathlete in the 19 and under age group. His best event was cycling, so Lance soon made that his main focus. Armstrong quickly became one of the best cyclists in the U.S. and the world once he decided to focus on cycling. He won both the U.S. National Cycling Championship and the World Cycling Championship in the same year, 1993. Lance Armstrong was told he had cancer in 1996. The cancer was very bad and was in his lungs and brain, so there was a good chance he wouldn't live. Lance Armstrong won the Tour de France, the most important race in his sport, three years after he was told he had cancer. Even more amazing is the fact that he kept winning the race for seven years in a row. Lance ruled the world of cycling from 1999 to 2005. He won every Tour de France, which is two more than any other cyclist in history. Armstrong has not yet responded to the study. However, his attorney has referred to it as a one-sided hatchet job. The discussion is still ongoing, and there will undoubtedly be further fallout in the media as this riddle is solved, but this research may give conclusive answers to one of cycling's most pressing questions. In either case, it does not appear that things will go well for Armstrong, and we may have to put him at the very top of our list of the worst sports scandals in the history of the world. We'll see. That's all for today's video. We will be back with more such information like this. Until then, please do like the video and subscribe to our channel. Won the Tour de France champion. Acceleration of Armstrong is absolutely frightening here. Hero. Or liar. To think that I'm going to come back into sport and risk my life with performance enhancing drugs is crazy. Miracle man. This isn't going to stop me. Or a master of deceit. This is the story you don't know and substances to enhance your cycling performance. Yes. Wow, I thought this, this can't be because I'm 25 years old. Why would I have cancer?